Lois, Afwa, Dumpty. Yeah, you can you can slide with that. <laughs> okay, I can slide with it. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so, Lois Afwa Dumpty is a passionate STEM advocate. She's currently a doctoral researcher in the Department of Engineering and Innovation at the Open University UK. She's currently listed as one of 74 Ghanaians who inspire Ghana. She currently serves as the coordinator of Sankofa Mentorship Hub and also the secretary for vacation initiatives in science Africa, which focuses on the use of fun activities to advocate for STEM education. Lois has been a major recipient of numerous scholarships, which includes Global Challenges Research Fund, Royal Society, um, Lever Helm African Award, Robert Bosch Stephen award winner for young African researcher, for young African researcher, just to mention a few. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm so sorry, I'm trying to arrange, trying to get my camera in order. Yeah, that's all right, yeah. that's, yeah. Okay, uh, can you see me? Yeah, I can see you perfectly fine, Jigo. All right. Yeah. Thank. Thank you very much. So, how how did I do with your bio? Yeah, it was great. Thank you so much. I yeah, I could recognize myself. So I just quickly move on to uh, my session so I can save you a little bit of yeah. talk with the internet. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I'll appreciate it. Uh, yeah. Just as you said, my name is Lois Ifo Ochiwa Damte. Uh, you tried. Um, you got it. Um, currently doing a PhD at the Open University in the UK and. Um, with the Department of Material Science and Engineering, where I'm um, okay. researching on the use of um, nanomaterials for water purification in Ghana, and it's funded by Global Challenges Research Fund, as just as you said. Right before that, I also did an MPhil, which was a joint collaborative um, scholarship with the University of Ghana, Legon, and with Aston University, UK, specifically in the Institute of European Bioenergy Research Institute. And that was funded by the African Royal Home Liver, Liver Home Trust. And the reason why I'm mentioning all these scholarships is because I'll be going through a series of scholarships and what these categories fall under. So it will really be helpful. Okay. So I'm here to just break a myth of what the whole scholarship scheme is about, what, what is legible, oh, yeah. what's not legible, and what all the scholarship, I mean, teams that you can enroll on is about. So I'll say scholarship yeah. is just like um, a monetary gift that is given by... Um, an organization or a sponsor when you are set to meet all the mm -hmm. requirements that is set by them. So they normally okay. come in a form of um, financial need uh, based on academic performances and all of that, and specifically covers an area of subjects or based on your qualification or your achievement. And normally these scholarships are given by private businesses, schools that are internally okay. funded some foundations, some non-profit groups, governments, and individuals. I think we would want to share a slide, but if not, I'll just quickly go through um, them. Okay. Um, so basically, how the scholarships works based on certain requirements. They will sp uh, spell out certain requirements that you need to be able to fulfill. And some of them might be quite simple, like producing a one-page um, proposal, or some of them might be a little bit complicated by providing multiple letters of recommendation, both to the school and from your institution that you're based on. And this scholarship are based on setting eligibility criterion. So one of the things is that when you see a scholarship online, it's very useful to search your eligibility criterion, whether you fit into what they are requesting for. And sometimes it might be either country specific or need specific, gender specific, race whatsoever, et cetera, et cetera. And some of these scholarships cover a whole lot of costs from your tuition to uh, stipend, I'll explain later on what it is, transportation and what have you. So scholarships come in two forms. They can either be fully funded or partially funded. So with the fully funded, normally covers your tuition fee. And we all must agree that studying in an, um, a developed country is quite, um, I mean, 
very um say expensive in court. So mm-hmm. normally the full scholarship covers your tuition fee, they give you a stipend, and the stipend is, out of that you can fend for your living expenses and your accommodation. Some scholarships, which I am part of, which is the Global Challenges Research Fund, even covers up to your transportation, where you can fly in and out of the country per year, as long as you wish, and there's a grant for that. And there are partial scholarships, and normally the partial scholarships covers just your tuition alone, or they give you just tipping alone Mm -hmm. that can cover for your um, living expenses and your accommodation, what have you. So there are categories if you go to schools that scholarships are based on. Scholarships come in the form of um, student loans, bursaries, fully or partially funded, financial aids and grants. There are differences set out on that. And I wish the presentation could show. Jigo, do you have the presentation? But if not, I could just quickly run through them. Um, Anyone with any questions? Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. I'll prefer you, you run to okay. them. Okay. I'll prefer you yeah. run to them. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So um, you are, you're given a lot of options if you want to study in a developed country or if you want to study somewhere that you can fend for yourself. It can come by internally funded scholarship in the institutions or you can ask for student loans. For the student loans, you will need to pay back, unfortunately, with interest. It's just like a loan. You can also go for bursaries. Yeah. Some of the bursaries yeah. covers your tuition or your textbooks or your living expenses, what have you. And it can... Um, you, you can also get a financial aid or you can get grants. Some of them are paid for, some of them are not paid for. Uh, so you would need to find out if you have an idea of, um, or uh, you have prior knowledge of wanting to study in an institution, you can look at that. So there are certain documents you need, specifically if you want to study outside, you need those documents ready at hand. So let's take a typical, typical example. You want to study next month. You need to get this document down. Jing, jing. Yeah. Um, you need your academic transcripts. You need your academic mm-hmm. certificates. You need your academic yeah. CV, which is curriculum of the tie. You need your statements yeah. of purpose or letter of motivation. And normally that is geared towards a specific course. So you need to channel that. Or you need an English proficiency letter. Um, okay. Some comes <laughs> in the form of IELTS for the UK and Canada. Um, GRE for US and others, then we have TOEFL, G, uh, GMAT. So depending if you start an application, you'll be told what specifically they need from you. And sometimes so the scholarship has some essays they want you to do. Um, so people are like, okay, you have given us a lot of information. What am I doing? Where do I start from? So the first yeah. thing you can do is just to Google search. You can just go on your Google um, portal and just search fully funded scholarship in your particular course. If, you're, if you want to study materials engineering in materials engineering or in inter- mm-hmm. international development, or you can search, search for fully funded scholarship in the UK, in the US, and you pull out a lot of scholarship portals that you can do. Or you also need to subscribe to some scholarship portals. So I have I've made a YouTube uh, video on very um, eight most useful um scholarship portals then you can search for scholarship and i've got a lot of testimonies from people who have been able to get scholarships on that portal so i can drop that Mm -hmm. later on or you can just contact me if you want to Um, so i mentioned all these eight websites and i I don't i I don't have much time to say over here but quickly Mm -hmm. and jittery um you would find your scholarship or whatever you need in your particular field in those websites and they are very good if you can sign, sign up to their newsletters. They give you scholarships every Mondays and every Tuesdays. One of the things you should know if you're applying for a scholarship is that you should never give up. Um, there are no seasons for scholarship. It runs yearly. And trust me, you, will, you, you are bound to get more loss, losses than wins. But the right spirit will get you a scholarship eventually if you really want to study. And whenever you're writing an essay or whatsoever that is required of you, I- allow someone to proofread. And also one of the key things you need to do is to form either a Microsoft Excel or a Google Sheet. Keep the scholarship name that you're applying for, the, the requirements they ask of you, and the deadline. Because it, it might be it's so much that you might miss something. So it's very good to keep the deadline also on board. As I always said, don't stop, 
keep on applying and applying and applying and one is obviously going to come to you save, yeah. you should save time and stress as well by also using the scholarship portals that i've mentioned or that i've used on the youtube channel known as lois Efua, l-o-i-s-a-f-u-a my first and my middle name um be original as much as possible don't ask and i always say this it is good not to ask somebody to write your essays for you it's very important that you yourself write your essays and be drawn by your own inspiration and don't expense wings at all search for the scholarships there's no scholarship season scholarships are all year round and they are readily available and i mean take the right step and approaches of also using social media your phone don't use social media for every other thing rather than your own personal and career development. Yes, a lot of programs yeah. and a lot of internships, um, conferences of which I met uh, Dr. Adenike on. It was a fully funded conference and we had that opportunity to even benefit for them. They are all available on their master scholarship, PhDs, um, diploma, undergraduate, whatsoever. So it's very good to also have like an international portfolio for which you see the world from a different angle and whatever projects mm -hmm. that you are interested in doing, it's very good to see how other countries for which we are all bound by the same purpose to see how they are doing it so that you can use that as a measure to also help you in developing yours. So, I mean, if we're seeing the slides, I would have shown you a couple of people that are, are like all around studying in different countries. Nigeria is a very high recipient of Commonwealth scholarships as I share in now. I've had contact with a lot of people who have worked with that and they are living proof to it. So whoever is watching, wherever you're watching from, if your time is now to be able to get, um, um, be, be, be more intentional about your personal and career development by feathering and giving yourself quality education all through. There's no excuse for that. If it is money you're telling me, then there are scholarships that are available to help in that. So make use of those channels. Thank you very much. And, um Thank you very much, Lois Ifwa. You've you really done justice. You really done yeah. justice to your topic, and no we problem. really appreciate you. Yeah. Um. Before I ask questions from the Green Institute, I would like to ask the audience if they have any questions for you. They can they can come up with it. But as for now, I would like to ask you my personal questions. Okay. Okay. Uh, even though I have some few outlined, it looks like your explanation which you give in a detailed manner cuts across so many of them. But yeah. particularly one that I would like to ask is on um, um indigenous scholarship. Okay. Yeah. Like what what role should government of developing countries play to effectively assist indigenous students in order to be able to like in order to be able to secure scholarships? What role yeah. should the government play? Yeah, I, I think one of the key roles is um, being able to set out a very well-developed plan or strategy in the terms that there should be a lot of liaising or partnering mm -hmm. with um, our developed countries of which the SDGs have set out clearly in SDG Goal 4, quality education, that there should be a lot of partnership for goals. So with yeah. that, if you're able to create that enabling environment, they are able to create and um, empower people from our local institutes or from our local indigenous to be able to study in developed countries. Then second thing, to create an enabling environment for them to come back. Because if they are being yeah. trained outside the country and there is no, nothing to come back home to, then they might as well be equal as nobody. So if they're able to create an enabling environment for them to go and study and come back, then impact the knowledge they have studied out there to them. That will be one of the key strategies to, um, uh, to help help what the government can do in that field. And with that, one of the first points is creating center of excellences. So center of excellences in the sense that in your particular field, you can also um, um, create a center that enables in that field, just like what the Green Institute is doing. So if yeah. um, someone is doing something in greening in, in the UK, you learn it, you bring it to your institute, you enroll students on board, and people that have gone to study as well, they come back to the Green Institute to impact on local indigents. And I think one of the that's one of the key things the government should do. Secondly, it's also partnering, just as I said, with member institutions like the WHO, the UN, the um, African SDGs, all of those partnering institutions, so that they'll be able to clearly outline 
ways and means of, I mean, empowering our local people in terms of schooling, internship, conferences, certifications, and all of that. So I think that's, that's one of the reasons or things they can do. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Lois, so much. Um, uh, while, while we are waiting for our audience, okay? Uh, yeah. You know, the, the, government, the government has an allocated budget for education annually, okay? Uh, and and in Africa, we don't think that this we don't think that this budget has been has been fully utilized, and we don't think that this budget have been given priority in terms of government expenditure. Because mm. case study like in Nigeria, if you should look at the percentage of the percentage allocated to education, is very appalling. Okay, mm. so mm. do you think that there should be there should be a special intervention fund when it comes to scholarship in order to be able to accelerate the rate of literacy in Africa? Yeah, I think so. But um, one of the things I would like to point out with is that I feel these, these scholarships that are given or these um, funds that are made available by the government should have a yeah. separate independent body um, okay. overseeing sure. those, those, uh, those funds. Why am I saying mm -hmm. that? Because the government is subject to change. I didn't know about Nigeria, okay. but um, I'm, I'm from Ghana, and this, this, this political yeah. party will come on board and think this is not important, so um, it's scrapped out. The next political party will come on board, say this is important, so it should come yeah. on board. So I feel that anything that is based on budgets with education, the people are more at the center of it, and the people are affected more. So this should be a separate institution from what the government is. It shouldn't be government dependent. And um, the, the, there should be a, a, an honorary quota, okay? So there should be a quota where, okay. um, irrespective of the change of government, these, these, uh, these funds are still eligible and available for all, not based on your political mm -hmm. party or the terms of bureaucracy where you know somebody before you are entitled to do scholarships. So I think, yeah. and, these, and these independent bodies should not be made, uh, should be made accountable. So per the budget, you need to make accountability on whoever receives funds from or to from it. And I think that's what it is. If it is made government dependent, um, honestly, it will be played as, as a political game, which is not, okay. not in the interest yeah. of the people. Yeah. People. Yeah. Oh, that's that's rightly said. Rightly said, Lois. Um, we have Christopher with us in the room. Um, Hi, Christopher, Christopher, can you hear us? Hi, Christopher, can you hear us? Yes, I can. I can hear you. I can hear you. Hi, Christopher. Oh, oh. okay. Um, I believe you have you you do have a question, right? Yes, I I do have a question. Can I can I ask that now? Yeah. Yeah, Christopher, I'm listening yeah, yeah, to sure, you. Sure. Please. Sure. Um, thanks so much for your talk. Uh, my question is based around you know ethics. Um, so today okay. we see lots of funders, lots of companies, a lot of institutions who in the past have been involved in in, in oil, you know, in, in carbon um, carbon based businesses. So they yeah. see the transition to more renewable pathways and to more sustainable pathways, and then yeah. they give up they give out scholarships, you know. Yeah. So so do you have an, an ethical response to that. So do you collect money from Shell to fund yeah. education, maybe in, yeah. in climate? or fund your education yeah. in, in, in in engineering you know so you know yeah. these these companies in the past have a history you know of being based around carbon system you know coal and they're transitioning so so what is the ethical response if you have one to that situation yeah and and i'll i'll come back to the european bioenergy research institute um one of the things was that they funded me to be able to study in the uk in the ASCII university and moreover, one of the key things they looked at was having an R&D. So there's a research and development faculty that yeah, they, know, mm -hmm. they know that the world is moving from carbon-based materials. So um, it might not be a smooth transitioning, change is not a, 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 a quick, abrupt transition. But uh, mm -hmm. um, one of the systems was that they were using um, biofuels in conjunction with the petroleum systems, okay? And being able to change the cars to be able to suit that measure. So they have acknowledged R&D, which is research and development, where they are quickly um, or in a stepwise process moving away from these ethics that, are, that, 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 that do not promote um, climate change. 
So in, in, in 10 years, 15 years to come, there's a strategic plan to be able to move away from these things that, help, um, that do not help to promote our climate um, and our climate as well. So I think that there, it wouldn't be an abrupt change, but it's the willingness mm -hmm. to be able to change and the willingness to be able to adapt to that change that every company or every company should be ready to. And I think that if they are giving you the scholarships to come to the UK or something like that, most of them are moving away from that. So you'll be given an element of, of, of teaching in the sense of how to move ethically from what they are producing to that. So if you come back to the company, I always entreat every company that is looking at that to always have a research and development based system where they, are, they, they, they draw a plan of action to how they, they are subject to this change. Uh, yeah, th thank you so much, Lois. I, I believe you've really answered Christopher's question. Yeah, hopefully question. I have. Uh, no, Christopher, do you have any question or should I go, go ahead to ask mine? Christopher, can you hear me? I actually have, have an extra one. Um, you, you mentioned it. Um, okay. Since you want to apply for scholarships. You have a lot of information coming in. You feel overwhelmed. You have an information overload. You know, so how 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 do you handle yeah. so you know you have deadlines you have yeah. this one has opened next one has opened and you're confused you get you get panicky so how how do you manage that information um overload that's that, that would be my, my question yeah one of the things that have really worked for me was um creating a microsoft excel or even just taking a paper and a pen so i write the scholarships based on their the earliest deadline and the documents that is required of me. So I open them portal by portal and I, 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 I put them down. So you get overwhelmed, honestly. And um, the essays and the, and, the, and the requirements and the things you need to upload. So just as I said in the document session, just scan every document that you need. The documents are not gonna change. So scan them down and start the application now. And Always, always start it because there are there are some of them that are portals by portals. If you don't get to the next portal, you wouldn't know what is required of you. Maybe you need to write a, a five hundred pay five hundred word essays three times, three different topics. So it's good to start um, then write along the line where you are and what they require of you. So keep an inventory specifically for your scholarship portals so that you don't miss any deadline. Um, yeah, Christopher, I believe that answers your question, and we are already coming Thank to you. the end of to the end of the session. Thank Lois, you. If we are, we yes. are, would rather have no one else than you that has been a beneficiary to scholarship. <laughs> so yeah, uh, we really we really appreciate your presence, and we are honoured. And we are looking forward to seeing, and we hope you stay you stay safe this time. Yeah. And Happy Environment Day to you, okay? Happy Environment Day to you, Jigo. And thank you so much for yeah. having me. Thank you to the management and the team for the good job yeah. they are doing in terms of world environment and preaching sustainable development goals all over. So um, yeah. if anyone wants to contact me in terms of if okay. they have any, they watch it after, um, you can use my name showing um, on the screen on um, okay. Facebook. And you can use my second and my middle name on instagram i'm on all the social yeah. media or you can just google my social media handles will pop up then you can ask me any question they do want to ask as well and if i don't have the answers to them i'm sure to link them up to the right people to also help them to achieve what they want to do let's be conscious yeah, of our personal you. entire yeah. development yeah. okay thank you so much Jigo. <laughs> great session yeah Bye. thank you so easy yeah, it's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure, people. Bye. Bye.